first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. Thank you for joining us. We are live streaming here at the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom. As we do every weekday, we start around 1 p.m. We go throughout the afternoon. And one thing I always like to let people know is that if there's ever breaking news, this is the place to go outside of other news shows. But regardless, however you found us, thank you for doing so. Right now for this segment, we are talking about earthquakes on Mount Rainier, of course, right there outside of Seattle, Mount Rainier in the Cascades. And there's a swarm of earthquakes, actually potentially hundreds, I believe, uh, that have been happening up there. And we want to find out a little bit more about that, why that's happening, what that means. Is there any concern to do so? We are joined by the USGS um, Cascades Volcano Observatory and our research scientist, Alex Yetzi. And Alex, you know, always great to have you here on to talk about this and uh, and your uh, your coworkers as well to fill us in on some of these details on what's happening. But when it comes to this Mount Rainier thing, you know, obviously this is a huge volcano near a lot, a lot of population. When you hear a whole bunch of earthquakes on a volcano, it can cause a lot of concern. So could you fill us in on just what has been happening there uh, to get that kind of knowledge and then what we should really be concerned with with it? Awesome. Thank you, Greg, and thanks for having me here. Uh, so since this morning, about 1.30 a.m., we've started to see in a swarm of activity at Mount Rainier. And so what that means is a lot of earthquakes that are closely spaced in time um, that are occurring, and a lot of them are repetitive. So it seems like they're occurring in a very similar location within the volcano. Like you mentioned, there's a couple of hundred earthquakes already. Our partners at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network are working diligently to locate all these events. I think about an hour ago, I checked on the website and it was up near 150 as well. And there's still still a backlog, so they're still working hard. Um, at its highest rate, there was up to several earthquakes per minute. Uh, and it's been happening since, like I said, since about 1.30 a.m., um, so a few hours as well. And it's been pretty consistent, although every once in a while we do see a little bit of a waning in the activity. And these are occurring about two to six kilometers below the summit of Mount Rainier, uh, mostly below um, above maybe four kilometers at Mount Rainier. And they're occurring in a very similar location right underneath the summit. And so when you see a, a run of earthquakes like that, hundreds of earthquakes all happening in this short amount of time, does that cause concern that this could be the potential for an eruption? Or what does that really tell you with this information? Yeah, so swarms are, are kind of common at Mount Rainier, but usually they're a lot smaller and a lot less less um, earthquakes. So swarms occur maybe one to two times per year at Mount Rainier, and Mount Rainier generally has maybe eight or nine earthquakes per month that's being located. So this is a significant departure from what we see in background activity. Uh, in 2009, there was a swarm that was kind of similar to this one in terms of number. Uh, I think there was over 120 located earthquakes with over a thousand earthquakes existing in that swarm, and it lasted for about three days. So this has happened at Mount Rainier before. Um, we, at this time, we don't think it's an increased potential for an eruption at Mount Rainier. Um, we think this is caused by hydrothermal fluids. So basically, this is just like hot water and stuff that's happening um, that's moving through existing pathways within the volcano. Uh, if we were thinking that we were heading towards an eruption, we would expect to see a few different things. Number one, uh, as of right now, it's just an increase in earthquakes. We're not seeing deformation at the volcano, so we're not seeing it start to inflate. We're not um, seeing anything in the infrasound or, or sound waves that are occurring above, signifying that something's happening above the surface of the volcano. And we're also not seeing anything in the webcam imagery. Um, so if we were leading towards an eruption, we would expect to see something happening in the other types of data. And we would also expect to see different characteris 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 characteristics. Sorry, it's been a long morning. We've been up for a uh, while. I'm sure you've been doing a lot of reporting. For everybody who's watching, we're live right here while this is happening. We're live. So yeah, yeah. And uh, Alex has been reporting on this all day. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, sorry. So we would, we would expect to see different things happening with the seismicity. Um, so A, we would expect to see maybe it's starting to shallow. As of now, they're pretty small earthquakes. The largest was a magnitude 1.7. So they're still pretty small. You can't feel these at the surface. Um, so we would expect to see maybe some larger earthquakes. And they're also very similar to tectonic earthquakes. So they're very high frequency. And if we were leading towards an eruption, we would expect to see different types of earthquakes, such as lower frequency that might indicate potential magma movement. 
Gotcha. Okay, so we would see so uh, different kinds of earthquakes would be occurring. You mentioned something about the uh, maybe a hydrothermal event. Uh, you, I could be saying that incorrectly, but something associated along those lines, from what I understand. Do you think it could have anything to do with external like temperatures, anything like that? You know, snow melt, anything that could be causing some of these earthquakes, if that is hydro related. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we do tend to see. Um, external influences on some seismicity at Mount Rainier. This is not something we see seasonally, so we don't think it's just like melting of the glacier. Um, but sometimes we do see an increase in, they're called glacier quakes, or earthquakes that are happening within or below the glacier on Mount Rainier. So we don't think these are relate related to seasonality, just because we haven't seen something like this since 2009. Gotcha. And since this is the biggest spate, you know, since 2009, how did that one end? when we're when you're talking about something that was i guess similar yeah so it lasted for about three days so right now we're still in the in the beginning maybe 12 hours or so of this sequence so we're not sure how long it's going to last um so we would expect it to maybe last a similar duration um and that earthquake swarm was slightly different in character there were similar locations um but they tended to come in bursts of earthquakes and then have a little bit of a period of um quiet and we're starting to see that a little bit, but it's been pretty consistent with the earthquakes for now. Um, so we're still very, very early on in the swarm. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it evolves potentially over the next few days. And have you noticed any other activity happening in any other volcanoes in the Cascade Range You know, at the same time as this one? No, uh, we haven't seen anything connected to uh, any, of the other, any of the other volcanoes. Okay, so probably nothing to do with those. This seems like then it's probably an isolated event. Now, when we're talking about, you know, hundreds of volcanoes happening over the course of just right now, even, you know, just a little over 12 hours when mm -hmm. we're talking, you know, how how long does this have to go on before you would start to begin concerned, start to become concerned about an eruption? Good question. So because the one in 2009 lasted about three days, um, as long as it's staying kind of within that same characteristics of that previous swarm, um, we would invoke a similar explanation for what we think is causing it. If it started to go on for maybe a week or so, that's completely different than past swarms that we've seen at Mount Rainier, then we might be concerned. Gotcha. And when it comes to Mount Rainier itself, you know, in the in the Cascades, is it the most likely volcano to erupt as far as, you know, that kind of system where you're comparing it to some of the other ones? Or where does it kind of stand in that in that realm? Yeah. That's, that's a question we get a lot, actually. Um, personally, I would say that the most likely to erupt might actually be Mount St. Helens. It's been the most active over the past few decades, um, and it's kind of in a period of unrest. Mount Rainier hasn't had an explode or an eruption since a thousand years ago or so. Um, so I would probably say that Mount St. Helens would be more likely, uh, but we keep an eye on all of our volcanoes just, just in case. And is there anything that the public should be concerned about with this number of earthquakes that's happening right now as far as you know, it, whether eruption or any other kind of uh, natural activity that's coming from Mount Rainier? No, we don't We don't think there's any increase in um, hazard at the volcano at this time. Um, but it's worth telling the public that you should always sign up for our volcano uh, notification system and follow our social medias because as we have more information, um, we, would, we would post and tell the public as, about that. Perfect. And uh, oh, one last question, because I know people are going to ask this as well. Uh, just based on you know talking about volcanoes before um i know you have a lot of monitoring that's up there on mount rainier have you noticed any release of gases of any kind around the volcano uh we haven't noticed any releases of gases at the volcano as a result of this but we also don't have any permanent gas monitoring instrumentation at rainier so it's usually um, seasonal deployments or potentially gas flights that would show that Gotcha. And is that something that you might put some some temporary ones up there because of this earthquake spate, or is this more a wait and see approach? As of now, it's a wait and see approach. If we started to see changes or um, things happening in some of the other disciplinary data, such as uh, deformation, we might consider something like that. Um, but as of now, it's just a just an earthquake swarm. Gotcha. So uh, it sounds like you know going to be watching this swarm, see how long it lasts. If the earthquakes get bigger or it lasts more than three days, then that's a change of approach. But otherwise, it sounds like this is kind of matching up with that 2009 um, one fairly similarly. Yeah, pretty similarly. Um, but we'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. All right. Well, Alex, thank you so much. Anything else that you think is important for people to know? Or that they've been no, asking? just, just keep, 
keep watching our social medias and sign up for the volcano notification and we'll let you know if anything changes. All right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time and, uh, and being here. I know it's been a very busy day, but all the work that you do, you know, just, yeah, know that it's appreciated and thanks for getting this information out to everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much, Greg. All right. Talk to you later. And for everybody watching, again, you know, we're live here from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom. This is one of the things that we can do since we're live streaming. We can pivot. We can bring you if there's stories like this that are happening today. Obviously, 1.30 in the morning is when this started occurring. So we want to make sure that we got you some information out. And uh, thankfully, the USGS and Alex were available to do that. But if there's ever something that you do want to know about and we're live here between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., send me an email, fox12 now at kptv.com. We can see if we can get somebody on uh, to talk about that. But there's always lots happening here. We're got, we are going to take a break uh, right now. So we'll take a break. But um, thanks for being here. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Again, I'm Greg Dibbler. This is Fox 12 Now. And we're off. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks again. Yeah. Awesome. I'll probably be writing you if it keeps on going for the next couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I can come back on. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye. Bye.